So, you want to add a calendar to your Rails app. How do you do so? Well, it depends on what you want that calendar to do. Maybe you want to provide it as an alternative way to browse records in your database. Or when you're editing a record, perhaps you want to add some kind of date picker instead of using a clunky select menus like this for choosing a date. Well, in this episode, I'll show you how to accomplish both of these things. Now, let's start with this date picker here. So if you have a form and you want to select a date through a calendar, how do you do that? I will be using jQuery UI to do this since it includes a date picker that does just what I want. When the user clicks on a text field, they'll get this calendar pop-up, which they can use to select a date, and that is what will be submitted through the form. So let's get started and add this functionality. Going to the gem file for this Rails app, I'm just going to add the jQuery UI Rails gem here into the assets group, and you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. Now I still need to include the assets for this, so I'll go into the application.js file under the app assets JavaScripts directory. And then near the bottom here, I'll add a line to require jQuery.UI.DatePicker because we can selectively choose just what part of jQuery UI we want. And here I just want the date picker. And I'll do the same thing for the application CSS file. I'll just tell this to require jQuery UI date picker like that. Now that we have jQuery UI installed, we can easily add it to this form. First, I'm going to change this publish on date to a text field, and then I can add it through JavaScript. So here's that article form template, and I'll change this published on date select to a text field. And then next, I'll go into the article's JS assets file and add in the JavaScript functionality here through CoffeeScript. So I'll make sure the DOM is loaded. And then let's select that field, which is going to be under the article uh, published on ID, and just call date picker on this, which is uh, using jQuery UI. So let's try this out. Reloading the page uh, shows a text field instead of a date select, and when I click on it, it brings up our calendar pop-up, and let's cho choose August 1st as a date and click on Update Article. And notice that it changed the publication date to January 8th, so something's not working here. The issue is with how the date picker formats the date. You can see if I change the date to August 1st here, it uh, submits it in a format that Rails doesn't interpret correctly. Fortunately, jQuery UI supports a lot of options that we can pass into the date picker, including one to change the format, so let's try setting this. So going to my articles CoffeeScript file, I'll pass in that date format option and set this to one that Rails will easily understand. So now when I go to the form and select a new date, uh, the format that is sent in is going to match that of Rails, so that will be submitted correctly. Now that we've got this date picker working, I want to show you another way that we can integrate calendars into this app, and that is through this article's list here. Instead of displaying a list, I want to display a full page calendar that the user can use to browse the articles. Now there are several gems available for adding calendars to your Rails app. Uh, this list at the Ruby Toolbox is a good resource. However, most of these are pretty old and not all that well maintained. So instead I'm going to show you how to implement this from scratch here in this episode. Now here's the index view template, which currently lists out the articles. But instead of doing that, I want to display a calendar on this page. And the way I want this interface to work is I want a calendar helper method, which accepts a block, and I want the date to be passed in through here. So this way, this block will be executed for each day displayed on the calendar, and that way I can output any information I want, such as the current day. So now I just have to make this calendar helper method. I'm going to do it through a new helper module. Let's call it a calendar helper.rb. Now there's quite a bit of code that needs to go into here, so let me paste this in. The whole thing is about 50 lines total, but that's really not too bad considering all it's doing. Let me walk you through this. First of all, I'm defining this calendar helper method, which I called in the view template. Now whenever you have a lot of logic that needs to go inside of a single helper, consider moving it all into a class and defining that class in line right in the helper module, which is what I did here. Now notice I made this a struct, which is a convenient way to define accessors for the various attributes. And notice the first one here is a view, which is important to pass in because you don't have access to the helper methods within here, but you can easily delegate to the view for any helper methods you want to access in the calendar, or maybe override method missing in here. Now most of what I'm doing in this class is just generating various HTML tags for the calendars table. And I'm generating a header here and filling it with the various days of the week. And then below this, I'm generating a new row for each week of the month and then rendering out a day cell in each of those. And in here is where I'm capturing the block that I passed in through the calendar helper method. 
So this is where that block gets executed, and I'm passing the uh, given date to it. And I also have a couple of CSS classes I'm passing in through that cell uh, for doing some styling. And then finally, I just have this method to generate an array of weeks and filling this with date objects. So this is what I end up looping through up here to generate each of the rows. Now this weeks method is really the core functionality of generating a calendar, and it was quite easy to do thanks to active support. Any you know, methods like beginning of month and beginning of week and uh, in groups of seven, all of those are from active support and it makes it incredibly easy to generate a calendar. What I really like about this solution is that you can easily customize it to fit the needs of your application. You can add more CSS classes if you need to, or change the starting date, or maybe uh, add some interna internationalization to the header, and so on. Best of all, this doesn't require any external dependencies, so you can just grab this code and really mold it to fit your application. Okay, let's see this code in action. Reloading this page uh, generates this HTML table, filling it with the days of this month. Now, I want to improve the look of this, and there's a lot I can do with some CSS. Going into my articles SAS file, I'm just going to paste in the code necessary to do the styling. And reloading the page, and there we go. It looks much nicer. Now, currently, this calendar is empty. I want to fill it with articles that were published on each day. So here's how we can do that. Going to the articles controller index action, I'm currently just fetching all the articles, but instead I need to group these based on the published date. So I can uh, make a new instance variable here called articles uh, by date, and then let's set this to the articles calling group by on this, and then passing in uh, published on as the attribute we want to group by. So this will generate a hash where the key is the published date. So now for each day of the calendar, I need to see if there are any articles matching that date. So we can do that by calling uh, articles by date and then passing in the date as the key of the hash. So if there are, then I want to uh, display them in a list. So I'm going to loop through each of the articles by that given date. And for each of those, loop through them and display a list item for each one. And let's make this a link for the article's name and just link to that article show page. Oh, and looks like I have an extra equal sign thrown in here. Oops. So now when I reload the page, there are the articles displayed on their appropriate day. Now the last thing I want to add to this calendar is a, something that tells me the current month and also a way to change the month. So going to the controller index action, I need some way to keep track of the month that should be displayed. So I'm just going to have a date object here and for now I'll just default it to today's date. So we use that month. And then going into the index template, I want to add uh, that month name at the top here. So I'll put this in an h2 tag. Let's give it an ID of month so we can stylize it. And uh, let's uh, put the uh, date and let's do string of time here to chain to provide the name of the month and the year. And also we need to pass the current date into this calendar helper method because it accepts a date object, which will then display the month for that date in the calendar. So reloading the page. There's the month name. Now I just need links on either side to uh, change which month is currently displayed. So before the month name, I want to add a link that will go to the previous month. So uh, I'll use an angle bracket for that. And I'll have this pass in a date parameter and have the date uh, be the previous month like this. And that is a method provided by uh, active support. And I'll do the same thing for the next month right here. And then going back to the controller, I need to see if we are passing in a date parameter. And if so, then I'll call date.parse and parse that uh, date string that's passed in. Otherwise, we'll just, uh, just use the current date. So now reloading the page, we have these previous and next links, which clicking on one will change the current month displayed on the calendar. Really nice. Well, that's all I have for this episode. You now know a couple of different ways to integrate a calendar into a Rails app, whether it be browsing records, or when editing records with a date picker through jQuery UI. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.